Uh, let me welcome you back in the industrial biotechnology course. Now, I shall continue with the downstream processing. And uh, in, the, in this downstream processing, we will take care two different aspects. One is the liquid-liquid separation process and uh, the what you call distillation process is largely used by the industry. Now, liquid-liquid separation process usually uh, use, uh, use uh, where we have partition coefficient of the two liquid is different. As for example, with respect to a, uh, a particular solid will be different. As for example, I can tell you in case of penicillin fermentation, penicillin uh, separation process that uh, we use butyl acetate as a solvent. Now, butyl acetate when you, you decrease the pH of the, of the liquid to uh, penicillin solution to 2, the solubility of penicillin in, uh, in butyl acetate is more as compared to the water. So, when you, when you mix these two layer, then, then we will we'll find that uh, penicillin will go in the more in the solvent layer. Then, <clears throat> then since uh, butyl acetate is insoluble in water, so you can separate because if you separate the layer, we can separate the solve that, uh, that butyl acetate from the aqua space. Now, you, if, you, now we, if we take water and uh, we, we increase the pH to 6, 7, then we find that solubility of penicillin in the aqueous space is more as uh, compared to the solvent. So, the penicillin will go to, go to the solvent phase, the yeah, aqueous phase. So, uh, like this we can, we can purify this penicillin and after that, uh, as you know, penicillin uh, usually marketed in two different forms. One is called uh, in the form of penicillin capsule and the form and there is penicillin liquid that fluid, uh, that you know injection fluid. Now, when injection fluid we use, one we should we should imagine that you know this uh, that directly injected to the blast uh, stream. So, so it should be 100 percent free from any kind of contaminants. This is called pyrogen free material. But when we use uh, this uh, uh, that you know in the form of capsule, even you have little uh, contaminants is there because since our stomach is acidic pH of P2, it will take care of that. So, anyhow that uh, now I am going to discuss about the liquid liquid extraction process which is largely used by the industries. Now, the separation of the basically it is it says that separation of the two components of a liquid the feed by contacting with other second immersible liquid the solvent. This is the solubility of this solute in one solvent will be more as compared this is on the basis of partition coefficient. So, uh, the extraction is usually used when direct distillation is not economical. The examples are penicillin I just uh, extraction of penicillin from fermentation broth <coughs> by contacting amyl or butyl acetate. Then recovery of acetic acid from dilute aqueous solution by contact with ethyl acetate or ethyl ether. Then separation of high molecular weight fatty acid from vegetable oil by contacting with liquid propane. Now, liquid liquid extraction uh, method utilize the solubility difference of the component in liquid mixture. This is very important. Until unless we have the solubility difference, this method is not uh, 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 cannot be used. The in extraction operation, liquid mixture is uh, uh, is to be extracted is called feed, and the solvent is the liquid with which contact with the feed for solute extraction. The extract is solvent rich product of, of operation containing the extracted solute. This is called the extract phase. This extract phase contains the desired product in large amount. I can give a schematic diagram on that. This is like this with the block flow diagram. This is feed is coming this way and this is solvent is coming. Then they are mixing together the, the, and then the separation take place. We, we have extraction, we have raffinate. Raffinate means extraction means here we have mostly the solute, here we, we do not have much of solute that we present that. 
So, <clears throat> the equipment for extraction, industrial extractor can be classified in the following category. One is mixed settler, centrifugal extractor and counter current uh, contactor. So, the, these are the different uh, techniques that we have that I will explain. And uh, uh, now, mixed settler is consists of mixer and settler. The, so, you have feed and solvent, both the things we have, we mix it with the help of starter, then we settle that and then the one phase will be separated to other, lighter phase we take it out, heavy phase will take it out from the bottom. So, uh, these, these are mostly used for metal industry where high residual residence time and intense mixing is required for relatively extraction process. That this has little application in the biochemical industries, but I told you in the pencil in the industry also that your solvent is lighter than aqueous layer that is go to the top and in the aqueous will be bottom that also, but uh, this is mostly uh, used for the metal separ metal industry. Now, centrifugal extractor, we have centrifugal extractor is used for interdispersion of liquid and separation phase. The centrifugal extractor are high speed rotary machine that offered the advantage of very low residence time and commonly used pharmaceutical industry. Common extraction of, com, uh, of this kind is pod bio -Liang. Now, uh, counter current uh, uh, current column extractor, the extractor belongs to this category as the cylindrical cell with the internals. The heavy liquid enters from the top and light liquid from the bottom through a distributor. I can show you, now I think this will be very clear to you that how it is. So, we have, we have, uh, we have this is the spray column we spray the heavier liquid here and this is lighter liquid here and when it, it goes uh, like this then they mix together and uh, um, and this is called this is this is heavier liquid from the top and lighter from the through the this is the counter current uh, column contacted that we have now another things we have that is packed column Packed column means here we pack the uh, some kind of solid materials and then heavier liquid is coming here, the perforated materials that uh, which has some porosity, then lighter material when when they cross each other, then they mixed, they have the intimate mixing and uh, we, we can separate that light liquid will goes out from the top, heavy liquid goes out from the bottom. Now, another things we have what we call perforated plate, the sieve plate column. Now, you can see that uh, some kind of uh, uh, the sieving plates are there, the liquid is going like this, it crosses uh, like this and heavy liquid is come, this is also we can separate the light liquid and the heavy, heavier liquid like this. This is called counter column, current column, column contactor. Now, distillation is largely used by the industry as for example, that uh, alcohol industry we largely use the, this is on the basis of mostly the uh, temperature of vaporization of the particular uh, sol liquid that your particular solvent you are going to separate. The distillation in the unit operation separation of two or more liquid components of, of a liquid solution into more pure fraction. I, I can give it, it a simple example. Then the alcohol fermentation process, we uh, uh, during the fermentation process, not only the ethanol production take place, but bes besides ethanol, there are uh, fusel oil also formation take place. Fusel oil is nothing but higher alcohol, so that you can separate on the in the fractional distillation column. The operation involves the vaporization, subsequent condensation of the liquid, separation is achieved because of the difference of vapor pressure of the component at given temperature, liquid desired product is called distillate and the bottom product is called uh, bottom or it is called refinate. Now, distillation uh, examples we have the, the ethanol and water mixture. 
that is largely used by the industry because the ethanol has the boiling point 78 degree centigrade and water has the boiling point 100 degree centigrade so when you when you when you when you heat this solution and and we collect the fraction as uh, about 78 degree centigrade we get mostly the ethanol but with the separation process we can get maximum 70 95% of ethanol we cannot have more the because and 95% ethanol plus 5% water they form the azeotropic mixture it is very difficult it is not possible to separate so if you want to separate produce the absolute alcohol which contain 100% alcohol so we use the um, benzene as a solvent then and only then we can produce the absolute alcohol separation of petroleum crude from gasoline kerosene and fuel, fuel, fuel oil also can be done through the distillation process method used for the distillation process is differential distillation flash or equilibrium distillation and fractional distillation fractional distillation is largely used by the industry so that we can we can we can we can collect the different fractions uh, after the distillation so this is the schematically how this process can be uh, can be explained that we can we can we can heat this and then we pass through this column and you can you can see that we can we can collect it the different fractions that um, that uh, that we have uh, we have this is uh, this is the one is the column two is the feed preheater this is the preheater feed is coming like this and then condenser for the overhead paper this is the condenser overhead paper this is the four is the reflux down you want to reflux is you can do that and reboiler partial vaporization of the this so this is why this is how you can separate so so here basically at the bottom that you you get what you call a uh, refinet that is uh, that is actually the uh, waste material that is the, the unvolatile material that comes out from the bottom and volatile material we collected from the top this is the kind of distillation technique that we use now another technique that is largely used by the industry is the chromatography technique chromatography is a solute fraction technique that relies on the uh, dynamic distribution of the molecules to be separated between the two phases a stationary or binding phase and a mobile or carrier phase so you know that uh, this is this is the different type of uh, you know chromatographic techniques we have particularly i can give you uh, the example of uh, streptomycin fermentation process where we use this chromatographic technique for the separation of streptomycin substance uh, different uh, substances are separated based on the uh, differential distribution between the two phases application is the biopharmaceutical production biopharmaceutical and biomedical analysis environmental analysis diagnostic and the process monitoring now chromatography we have, uh, we have uh, the chromatography is the equipment that enable a sophisticated separation as for example we have gas chromatography we have liquid chromatography the basic difference between the gas chromatography and liquid chromatography is that the mobile phase in case of gas chromatography is the gas so we use uh, gas as a uh, uh, as a uh, carrier because when we inject the sample and then it vaporizes if it is gas that gas will remain in already in the gas phase or uh, another but with that gas you have to have a carrier gas you have sample sample is the gas but you have to have carrier gas that carrier gas will take the sample through the um, uh, through the by your column where the separation of different components present in the uh, in the in the gas mixture that will take place then it goes to the detector where we can detect the temperature so in case of gas chromatography we can three we have three different section one we call injector this is called injector and another we call oven where we have column and another we have detector so why what do you do do here we 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 put the sample 
we measured amount of sample with the help of syringe, then we here we put the carrier gas. Now, here everywhere we can maintain the temperature, we have different temperature control, here we maintain temperature, here with every everywhere you have heater, you can maintain the temperature. So, we here we maintain the temperature, suppose, suppose the sample is liquid as for example. Now, in case of in case of gas chromatograph, we can only analyze the volatile liquid, we cannot analyze the non-volatile liquid. The volatile liquid which can be vol volatilizes out. So, if the liquid, suppose I want to use the acetic acid. The acetic acid has a boiling point is about 121 degree centigrade. Now, the, the temperature of the injector should be more than 121 degree centigrade because as soon as we inject this acetic acid in the injector, this should be vaporized out. And once it vaporizes out, then what will happen? This carrier gas will bring the material here. So, here here I have column column is like this, it may be capillary, it may be uh, 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 pack column. So, you when you hit the column comprises of different packing material, when you pass through the uh, column, the different component present in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the sample that will be separate from each other and then it comes to the detector. Here also we maintain the temperature, everywhere we maintain the, as per the, the required temperature and temperature should be higher than the boiling point of the uh, sample that you are going to analyze. Because if it is lower than boiling point, there is a possibility of sedimentation of condensation of the particular uh, so, uh, liquid uh, in the column. So, you know you have to, we shall have to keep the temperature higher than the boiling point of the uh, that uh, uh, liquid. Then did they detected detected that detect that particular component A B C D whatever is that one after another is goes out like this. So here you have the you have the kind of electrodes and through the electrode it's passed through the and connect, connected with um, kind of a Houston bridge arrangement where uh, there is a change of voltage or there is a change of current on the basis of the they detect that what are the different components. Uh, present in the in the mixture. So, this is largely used uh, this is called uh, gas chromatograph in the liquid chromatograph this uh, mobile phase will be liquid. So, you hear the, the, the only the advantage of this of this uh, liquid chromatograph that uh, we can we can say we can analyze both the volatile and non volatile uh, the component present in the liquid. The whatever is the, the suppose we, is the, we I can give the example of uh, glucose. So, glucose is a non volatile uh, uh, organic material. So, this cannot be separate in, in the in the in the gas chromatograph. Now, we, we, we if you want to find out that what is the glucose concentration present in the sample, we can pass through the liquid chromatograph and then there we can we can find out. I can give this is a different example of uh, citric acid also, citric acid is a non volatile acid, acid. So, that also you can separate find out <coughs> the different type of protein also we can get analyzed in the liquid chromatograph. Now, element the fluid uh, element is the fluid entering the column or solvent that uh, carries the analytes and elevate is the mobile phase leaving the column that you know the, which is leaving the column that is the elevate. The stationary phase is the immobilized phase, immobilize of the support particles on or on the inner inner wall of the column tubing. As for example, we have silica layer, thin layer uh, chromatography, then we have uh, uh, we have silica gel, alumina like this, we have different type of packing material we use in the column. Now, we have mobile phase as I told you mobile phase we have we have liquid, we have gas, gas we use nitrogen, hydrogen, we use helium. The mobile phase moves through the chromatography column, the stationary phase where the samples interact with the stationary phase and is separated. The retention time is very important as per gas chromatography is concerned. The time required to separate because uh, when 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 the sample is coming here, 
then in the suppose sample contain a b c d different component first a suppose is coming then b will come see now um, initially how initially what you do we first we shall have to find out what is the probable component present in the that sample so we can we can we can use the pure sample pure sample we inject and then we find out that at what time this is time and at what time the peak is coming this peak we can find out this peak is coming at what time the this uh, this is called retention time this is the call uh, what you call retention time the so, retention time of a particular component that varies from each other it depends on the characteristics of the column also sometimes it may so happen that depending on the the the, the, the characteristics of the column is such that uh, both ab has same retention time they are very close to each other so they cannot be separate by using that in that case we have to use the different other column which can separate a and b from each other then and only then you can get the different peak the until unless you get the different peak you cannot correct you cannot say correctly how much compo how much amount of a present in the in the sample how much amount of p present in the sample so this retention time is very important time takes for a particular analyte to pass through the system from the uh, column inlet to the detector uh, under the set conditions the sample the substrate analyzed in chromatography that is uh, the that is the that is the sample we do solvent any substance capable of solubilizing another substance that is we use as a solvent now <coughs> the visual output is the chromatograph because as i told you that uh, this uh, chromatograph maybe this is on the basis of two type of detection we have and other either potentiometric or amperimetric mostly we have the potentiometric and through the potentiometric we can we can we can note the change of voltage the this voltage and this we correlate the concentration of the different component present in the reaction mixture so maybe we have some micro volt here that change of micro this we correlate with the kind of concentration of the component present in the sample the this is the visual output um, that we have the separation different peaks and pattern of the chromatogram correspond to the different components of the of the separated mixture now uh, as i told you that uh, here the picture is very clear suppose this uh, this is the mixture of uh, two particles and uh, this you can see that you know that configuration of the two particles are different one is triangular and another is uh, square so when it pass through the column the so one is separated from others and so you you will get the different peaks because first might be triangle is coming and second is the square is coming so you have two retention time so two components has two retention time so if you know is that that you give, when you inject the standard you find out that uh, what is the retention time uh, what, what, what is what is this component stands for and, uh, and what is the component stands for so with the respect to the standard you have to find out that what is that then you have to initially you have to uh, first you have to identify what are the different components present then you have to you have to inject the the desired amount because this chromatograph is used for dual purpose for both for qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis qualitative analysis we find out that what are the different possible component present in the sample and quantitative analysis means how much of the different component present in the sample the when you do the any kind of uh, want to do the quantitative analysis then we inject the standard sample with desired concentration with respect to the, that we find out how much concentration of of that particular component in the sample now uh, this is uh, schematically it can be uh, explained that the flow diagram is like this mobile phase supply the sample system then here suppose you have gas or if the liquid whatever you have is here you put your sample then it goes to the column and then that present in the column oven that is i told you that everywhere we have a temper we maintain the temperature because we maintain the temperature in such a way that the 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 the, the, the sample should not be condensed in the in any 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 different part of this particular uh, chromatographic system 
So, we, we, we pass through the column where the different component will be separated out, then we detected and after detected we have potentiometric recorded and computer data acquisition and processing system that is that is how we can monitor the different con concentration of the material present in the sample. Now, the characteristics of the material is basically they are different. There might, might be two type of uh, 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 column we, we mostly use. One is called packed column and it is capillary column. Uh, so, we, the capillary column is very, 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 we have, we can see the capillary column is, is quite uh, long and is, so on the basis of when it passes through this uh, capillary column, the different component present there, there will be separate from each other and this is the packed column, this is usually made of stainless steel and this is made of polymeric material and this is made of stainless steel. This is, this is not, this is very, this is very, comparatively this is a bit shorter and this is very longer. This is, we have this uh, and then that you know how the particles are separate from each other that ion exchange, reverse phase, uh, hydrophobic interaction, sizes, inclusion and affinity. The different type of uh, techniques that we have through which the particle can separate from each other. Affinity that uh, this suppose the sample contains two type of particles, but you know your 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 packing materials the affinity for this only. So other particle will will separate it out, and then you use some kind of velvet so that you know it deters this uh, this uh, from the solid surface. You get the pure uh, this component in your liquid. Now here you see this is size exclusion that you have bigger particle and smaller particle when it passes through this smaller particle will be separated out will be adjust will be will be added here and bigger particle will go out so and then you can you can separate from bigger particle from smaller particle now here the reverse space and hydrophobic interaction through which also we can we can easily separate out the uh, particles from one after another and ion exchange also we can analyze so so what i what i want to tell that uh, in this uh, particular lecture i i try to concentrate that you know that uh, two different techniques largely used by the biochemical industries for uh, in the downstream processing part particularly liquid liquid separation techniques i told you that penicillin industry is largely used uh, for um, the for because uh, we use the uh, butyl acetate or amyl acetate to separate the uh, penicillin from the fermentation broth to the solvent phase and then uh, then uh, uh, i i told you at the same time that uh, that um, that the capillary that uh, streptomycin is used by using some kind of chromatographic technique because uh, just to separate by we use the column through which the uh, streptomycin is, is specifically absorbed and we use the sulfuric acid as the element we do, we we take we take the penis the streptomycin sulfate uh, as the element so uh, then we have uh, I, I told you the distillation technique where uh, that like ethanol is uh, separated on the basis of the uh, particular boiling point of the particular solvent present in the in the mixture so on the way the way we, we, we heat it and then we pass it through the distillation column at different temperature we can separate out the different fractions and we can have um, uh, different uh, solvent uh, in the system so this is uh, this is all about the downstream processing and from that we have a clear cut idea that uh, the different uh, downstream pro processing has the different conception and different uh, way of uh, separation that we have so the, the, that is how different biochemical industry they differ from each other because of all the biochemical industry they have different downstream processing and they don't have the same type of downstream processing depending on the nature of the product they have they have to add adopt the the downstream processing accordingly so thank you very much